What is up, everybody? We are back in the prehistoric kingdom. My name is Grizzgoat. Today we have an exciting build for you. Uh, it's one of my favorites so far, and it's only the second build. So let's just jump right into this. Um, yeah, let's do it. Today we're building an exhibit for our Dryosaurus dinosaurs. We started in hard mode, which means we only get two dinosaurs to choose from. This is our ornithopod, uh, so a grazing dinosaur. Um, yeah, this build turned out really cool. I uh, like it, and I'm probably going to make stuff similar in every zoo I ever build for the rest of all time. Uh, it's really cool. Um, so I'm just kind of laying out the main pathway structure. If you remember in last episode, the pathways in this game, you can either use floor tiles or you can use kind of the curving uh, natural pathways. And what I'm learning is that it's best to kind of uh, use the natural pathways to bring your visitors to the exhibit. Uh, keep the ground very flat because the ground will poke through and drive you insane. Um, but just use them sparingly to bring people to the exhibit and then use the floor tiles from there and it seems to create a very clean, uh, nice look and doesn't, doesn't drive you crazy trying to figure out the pathways pretty much. So here I am, I'm kind of extending the rock uh, rock wall from our protoceratops um, bringing it over and I'm going to kind of make a little cave so that we can see our dryosaurus through uh, when they're sleeping when they're eating and, and I think that'll kind of help uh, shorten the distance between the viewing area for the protoceratops and our viewing area for our Dryosaurus. This series is going to be hard because every animal is a mouthful. But we'll get through it. I couldn't even say Caracal without second guessing myself in our Planet Zoo series, so this will be difficult. <clears throat> so, one thing that makes this game nice is that uh, scaling option. Just being able to take one rock and then scale it. Uh, to basically be an entire section of wall and still look good uh, is just like just so useful and going back to Planet Zoo I'm not even sure if I'll be able to do it um, but so I'm kind of building in a top viewing area uh, into the rock here and just kind of keeping that like natural look um, and it was, it just went by so quickly due to that scaling factor. And now since this is pretty far from the entrance, I'm going to add a restroom underneath, uh, just kind of hidden away. Now we're going to easily replicate some of the cave pieces to uh, kind of make that cave extend out a little bit and provide the animals plenty of shelter uh, and also kind of create a cool effect for the guests kind of to peek in um, like they're looking uh, out of the cave into the big prairie that we're going to set up here in a minute. And I love the way that this uh, darkened concrete blends with the rock. I think it makes kind of like this very like utilitarian modern feel, 
but also very natural because it's just like being absorbed by the rock wall. And I love the aesthetic of this. One thing that also makes this game kind of stand out to me is that when you build something and there's no animal there, the guests will still kind of use the pathway and stuff, uh, which is a little, little reassuring just because if you remember our tortoise exhibit, you have to put like viewpoints, you have to figure out how to get the visitors to actually utilize like a separate viewing area than just the first place they saw the animal. Um, so it, it is nice that, you know, the visitors in this game will actually take the time to go and look out of this thing that you built, even though there's nothing to look at. Which might mean that the AI isn't very smart, but it makes me feel appreciated and that my hard work is going uh, noticed by the guests. <laughs> So here will be our second viewing, or I guess our third viewing area. So we'll have, they'll come up against the glass. Um, if they can't see them in the glass, they'll probably go up the stairs. And then that third viewing area will kind of be a walk by viewing area that kind of just on the way to the next exhibit, they'll get a chance to see and see the animal if they couldn't see it from any of the other vantage points in our, in our uh, setup here. So now we're just putting in our guys. Um, they're kind of a, not too big of a dinosaur. And they are, I believe, deserty. They kind of like a, a beachy area. Um, so they, they have some cactuses sprinkled in um, and then redwood trees. Uh, I can't remember all the biomes in this game off the top of my head. But essentially, I kind of got a Southern California vibe from them. Uh, so sandy, rocky, a little deserty, uh, with some nice tall forests eventually further from the water. So that's kind of what we went with here. Blending the terrains within this game is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it takes some kind of getting used to because the intensity is either not intense enough or like way too intense, I find. So just like kind of light little brush strokes uh, go a long way for that. And kind of figuring out what intensities work best for you to kind of estimate how much of that terrain is going to be put down. So the, the plant brush tool in this kind of lays down clumps of uh, trees and vegetation. So I like to kind of spread it out a little more. Um, it's really nice for putting down stuff fast and building exhibits, but if you want to kind of like give it a more natural look, you'll have to uh, take your time and go into the groups and split them up and just kind of make it look more natural. like. You know, you're not going to see too many redwood trees on sand, so if you accidentally put one there, you're going to want to move it. Same with a cactus, you're not going to see it on like a lush green golf course style lawn. You're going to see it more on like sandy, uh, rocky terrain. So paying attention to that kind of detail is going to help you a lot in this game. To make a good looking exhibit. And there you can see our Dryosaurus is running around. Just living their lives. 
And now I forgot to show you guys the dung beetles in action. I don't know what possessed me to go look at that, but I caught them in, in action, which was kind of cool. I didn't know they actually did anything. And now we're setting up some viewpoints for our uh, top viewing area. And grabbing some education screens, spreading them around. Now I really like this sign, it kind of gives me a uh, National Park board kind of feel and because this area has this big rocky wall it kind of makes it feel like it's a, you're at like a national park or uh, you know something like that. And that thought actually kind of uh, helped establish some of the other areas that we have coming up. Uh, I have done so much work before I record started recording this episode. This game, it's fun. I recommend it. You know, there's, there's bugs from time to time, but there's really nothing that you can't get past. Um, and the game is in early development, uh, early access, I guess. So that kind of stuff generally is to be expected from games like this. Now I'm just going to add just a little bit of fencing to kind of uh, mark off the viewing area a little bit better. And there's the finished thing. I this shot just is awesome. I the way the sun is hitting and the dryosaurus right there in our nice little viewing area, just beautiful. So now I'm just gonna work on this uh, area just a little bit, just kind of make it a little less bland by adding some vegetation. And then I'm trying to stick with the vegetation on the outside of the exhibits to be um, from one biome kind of thing. Uh, so like, I think I think this is like the scrublands. I think they call this uh, all the trees and stuff in this pack. Um, so whenever I do something for more decoration for the zoo, I'm gonna be picking vegetation from that pack. If they ha if it has what I want, if it, if not, I might uh, kind of bend the rules a little bit. But if you stick to that, you should have a pretty cohesive product in the end. And now their dead wood selection also in this game is just really nice for creating a natural environment. And I just kind of go a little hog wild with these. Uh, dead trees laying on the rock. It just kind of makes it feel more alive and less uh, kind of studio produced. Here's another dung beetle. So now I'll just walk you through the final thing. Here we can see one of our dryosauruses. Of course it's raining while I, while I film the walkthrough. Uh, so you can see a couple dryosauruses right there. Uh, we put an ice block and some bedding under there, so they should be uh, drawing the dry sources to go under that cave every once in a while. There's our beautiful bathroom. Now we'll go up the steps to see the overlook. And there you can see it. You can pretty much see 
With the amount of dry sources in here, you can pretty much see one from any vantage point, I think. Um, so the exhibit turned out great. Um, it, the rock wall really creates an isolated uh, area. So like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.